Hello and welcome to my session, A Center of Excellence Equals Improved Business Results. My name is Tim Caldwell. I'm Executive Vice President at AOTMP University, and I look forward to sharing with you some ideas and concepts that will help you build your technology management center of excellence. Some information about me, I have over 30 years experience in the telecom mobility and cloud and IT management industry. I specialize in helping organizations drive technical, financial, and operational efficiency into their technology management practices. And what I'm about to share with you today is, uh, is, uh, is just that. This presentation deck will be made available for you, so you'll have all of my contact information as well as all the notes available in this session. A quick note on AOTMP University, if you're not familiar with us, our mission is to make education smarter, people more valuable, and the technology management industry stronger. IAUG and AOTMP University have a partnership. You can view information about that partnership at aotmp.com forward slash IAUG. That's a dedicated web page. And as an IAUG member, you always receive the benefit of preferred pricing from AOTMP University. We have over 200 online courses, 19 certifications, and have delivered tons of courses and certifications across the globe since 2003. One final note that ties directly into this session is that our training is focused on financial and operational efficiency best practices. We've gathered data from thousands of technology management environments to distill what works and what doesn't work, and we put that into valuable content for folks just like you. So with that as a backdrop, I wanna take a look here at a couple of different concepts around a center of excellence. The position of this particular session is that by building a technology management center of excellence, you have the opportunity to deliver new and improved business results to the organization that you serve. And those improved business results can take a lot of different forms and functions. And we'll get into what those are in just a second. But as we get started here, I'm sure everybody's heard the term center of excellence. Perhaps you have a center of excellence or you've worked in one or you're familiar with the terms. I want to provide kind of a new definition of a center of excellence to help ground this particular discussion. So what is a technology management center of excellence? First, any center of excellence is going to be a group or a team that collaborates and utilizes best practices around a specific area. And in this context, we're talking about technology management to drive business results. And I think the most important part of this definition is really at the end. It's, it is the group, but it's around driving business results. It's not just being efficient and effective with the business practice. It's about creating linkage between that business practice and ultimately creating a new bottom line benefit to the organization that you serve. And a telecom mobility cloud and IT management um, uh, organization becomes a center of excellence when two fundamental principles are adopted. The first one is going to seem pretty simple and pretty easy, a singular mission. But in my experience, what happens often within organizations, particularly within technology management organizations, is that there's a moving target. There's all sorts of digital transformation projects. There's new ways that the business and the users within the business are leveraging technology. And it's kind of a moving target. And so making sure that the mission is, is known by everybody within the COE and that it aligns specifically with what the business wants to achieve, that gives you an opportunity to focus on those results, right? And know that the singular mission is going, the details are going to adapt over time as new technology is put in place, as new business needs are uh, brought to bear, or even new customer needs or product needs and things like that. So having that singular mission and really having that be on your vision board of what the COE is doing um, is, is really the most fundamental step that needs to be taken, but it's really important to keep everybody on the same page or keep everybody rowing in the same direction, as they say. And the second part of it, which really ties back to the definition, is that there needs to be a strategy that explicitly addresses how technology is going to drive bottom line business results. And when we're talking about technology here, it's the network infrastructure, it's software, it's handsets, it's endpoints, it's hardware, it's all the different elements of the technology management practice and the technology itself. And when you can draw a straight line between, uh, for example, 
a group of people being enabled with uh, tablets that have a certain software on it to allow them to better fill in the blank, communicate with customers, um, you know, field support calls, understand what the inventory looks like, you know, whatever those elements are. And you can then be able to quantify what the business value or excuse me, what the business results are as a result of that technology, then you truly have created a center of excellence. A lot of folks that I've worked with in the past have kind of viewed a COE as a group that performs with excellence. And it is that. I don't want to take anything away from that. But in the context of a technology management center of excellence, drawing that connection between the technology management practice and how that is directly affecting business results is really what the glue is that keeps all this together. Now, AOTMP has uh, the Efficiency First Framework, and this is a, um, a business process methodology for managing technology. I want to share this information with you just in context of what any business process methodology you might be using, um, how that is employed in designing and building and driving center of excellence results. So a little bit of information here about the framework. Uh, it's a set of best practices and principles for managing uh, telecom mobility, cloud and IT technology. It promotes financial and operational efficiency and again drives business results. I think you see a common theme, theme here. And it is the foundation of our approach to building a technology management center of excellence. I mentioned earlier that you could have many different business process methodologies uh, in play in your organization, like ITIL or Six Sigma or TBM or a combination thereof. Regardless of the, the, the business process methodology or the framework you're implementing, um, the goal here is to increase efficiency, reduce cost, and mitigate risk, right? So uh, again, while the efficiency first framework is AOTMP University's context um, for, for driving efficiency, really you can plug in any, um, any BPM or any, any business process uh, framework that you'd like. There are a bunch of elements to the framework. I'm not going to go through all of this, but understand a couple of things off the top here is that we cast a wide net when thinking about the different business practices associated with a center of excellence. And they're in the lower left there, the 30 core practice areas. But what I really want to focus on here is, and I'll highlight this, is the four guiding principles of the Efficiency First Framework. I would argue that these also are the guiding principles of any center of excellence that you're going to build. It's operational excellence, it's financial accountability, technical integrity, and again, with the business results. It has to be about dry, drawing a straight line between the technology management practice the, the goods and services that are being delivered to the business and the value that those goods and services have towards whatever your business objectives are. So again, I wanted to provide this just in context of some of the information that I'm going to share with you, but if you kind of pin these four principles um, up with your singular mission and you know how your mission is going to be driving these results, that's step one in, in building a CO. Now, these guiding principles are also matrix, right? They're also um, uh, uh, related to one another. So when you think about, again, the you know, technical integrity, financial accountability, operational excellence, and, and business results as your main goals, also think about where there are areas of opportunity and where there are objectives to influence those particular goals. So if you think about going down the first column and you're thinking about different technical goals that are going to drive towards technical integrity. Uh, you think about the business case that you're going to be making from a financial perspective. You think about deploying and migrating the technology, and I'll also include in their decommissioning older technology that's not being used. And you think about the business influence being the users and the business adoption of that particular technology. Because as we all know, you could have the best technology plan in the universe. You could deploy it. It could be you know, cost effective and efficient, so on and so forth. But if it's not adopted and it's not leveraged to full intent, you're not going to be fully efficient within that practice. So when you think then about the, the financial goal of accountability, you think about total cost of ownership, return on investment. And you also think about uh, technical predictability. And by that, I mean, 
the opportunity to understand what the dollars and pennies are associated with the technology in a predictable fashion, right? Being able to understand that. And then operational excellence um, can be aided by automation from a technical perspective, you know, uh, operational uh, and financial productivity, making sure that every dollar and penny that's being spent is being spent for that purpose of the end goal of the, the business results. And then, you know, customer satisfaction, both internal and external customer satisfaction, by the way, you know, the technology plays a pivotal role in not only supporting your internal team, but then, then you know, external facing uh, customers. And then the business goals of understanding um, tech, or excuse me, the business goals of uh, driving business results can be effective from a technical perspective by thinking about the different opportunities to leverage technology, you know, being financially efficient with the dollars and pennies and uh, being able to engage the audience internal and external, you know, with the technology. So these guiding principles, while they're pretty straightforward, um, understand that they, have, they can't operate in pure silos. They need to be related to one another. So when you think about driving technical integrity, you need to think about the financial and operational and business aspects of that as well, and so on and so forth. Now, using that as a backdrop, I want to talk about a construct here for designing a center of excellence. There needs to be structure, and this is not a, um, a, a dotted line or a straight line reporting structure as much as it is orchestrating all of the different aspects of technology management into clear uh, pillars of responsibility and accountability. So I'm going to start at the bottom with this. And again, we have this theme, technical, financial, operational, and, and business aspects. And there are lots of activities and work, work streams and workflows that happen within each one of these. And I'll dig into those in a second. But if you think about then building a structure of accountability and responsibility, there is a center of excellence practice leader, which is the person that is setting uh, setting the direction, they're setting the objectives, they're designing the strategy um, you know, for the center of excellence. And then within that, there need to be leaders that are specifically responsible for uh, cohesion within all the technical activities, the financial activities, operational and, and business. And this again, in this context is bound by our efficiency first framework. But again, if you're using another business process methodology or another framework, uh, to tie things together, that could easily be inserted in there. Okay. Now let's take a look at, at at the different work streams and activities that happen, and these are only in the order of the uh, uh, the, the accountability matrix that I just shared with you. So when you think about um, the technical aspects, there really are two distinct groups here, and I put them into uh, what we'll call the systems team, and then what we'll call the network team. And this is not a comprehensive list of everything that could exist in the universe, but conceptually, if you think about the systems team being the team of people that is responsible for the technology and the technology platforms that are used to manage the technology. So you think about your ITSM or IT asset management tools and unified endpoint management and expense management and so on and so forth. These are the tools and systems that are used to manage the technology. I think it's important to think about all of the different business systems that you're utilizing to manage technology, both directly and then even some indirect systems like uh, HRIS platforms and maybe ordering portals and things like that. It's important to think about those as a set. Why? Because all of the data that's being exchanged and or utilized in the business functions of, for example, managing endpoints or managing cloud platforms uh, can be used in other systems, right? So creating a systems team that understands what all these platforms are, all the data associated with them, allows you to then focus on the, uh, the guiding principles of the center of excellence. And then the network team, this is really the technology that is the network, you know, that's being utilized. So you think about assets, licenses, and services. You think about functions like engineering and design and disaster recovery, inclusive of business continuity and those particular activities. So the network team manages the technology portfolio and the infrastructure and everything associated with that that ultimately is going to be delivered, you know, to the business and the systems team 
focuses on all those systems that are used in managing technology. And there are a lot of them. Once you have cohesion here in a technical pillar and everybody is operating in, a, in you know, with the same goals in mind, this gives you an opportunity to drive that, uh, that technical integrity along with keeping in mind the, uh, you know, the, the financial accountability and so on and so forth. The financial pillar, um, often this is like an IT finance team. They deal with things like auditing and budgeting and forecasting and invoice processing, which includes all sorts of activities like, like uh, uh, chargebacks and you know, um, accruals and things like that, right? So they're responsible for those work groups. And then uh, separate from the finance team, we've defined the supplier team. And these are going to be the folks that are, you know, contract management, sourcing and procurement, vendor management. They manage the relationships between all of those entities that are providing technology goods and services to you as an organization. And then there's the operational pillar. This is the business practice of, of, um, of delivering technology to the organization, right? So the delivery team is gonna be you know, supporting help desks. They're gonna be uh, managing the portfolio of technology. This is telecom, mobility, cloud, IT, asset services, licenses. Uh, they're gonna be managing that. There's endpoint management, order management, project management. One of the reasons we throw project management into the delivery team is, is that oftentimes the projects are directly associated with designing and developing or deploying, you know, technology. So that, that kind of fits in there. And then there's the, the, the support team. So <clears throat> there are three key elements in support um, for the, the support of the delivery team and support of technology. And that's, you know, change control, exception management, QA and QC. And then of course, aligning with, either the efficiency first framework or your business process management uh, framework of, of choice. And so the, these are often um, elements that, that they could be associated even with a project team or a PMO. And again, how you structure it in your organization is, is, is how you want to structure it in your organization. But consider that these pillars and these activities are core and central to what needs to happen and needs to be present within a center of excellence um, in order to drive those, those positive results. And so then there's the, the business team. <laughs> and these are business-related functions that, um, that often cross over into technology management. So you think about data privacy and governance and policy and risk and so on and so forth. These are specific activities that need to occur associated with the technology and the data um, itself. And then last, but, but certainly not least, is, the, is the, what we call the results team. And the results team are the people that are, that are focused on the strategy, how you're executing to get the results across all these activities, how you're delivering value through the execution back to the business. And that, of course, is going to require business analysis and reporting and analytics. And then uh, as an overarching category, performance management. Performance management is your key performance indicators, your performance dashboards, um, your OKRs, if you're using objectives and, and uh, key results uh, methodology, and ultimately the business impact. This, the results team is, is the one that is quantifying the so what and who cares about the activity of technology management. They're taking that information and they're saying, this is how, or this is the value of our technology management practice um, in delivering the technology, that technology then delivers bottom line business results. And here's what this means. And this is really important because there, there's, there's kind of two thought processes going on, right? Those that are operating within the business pillar and the technical pillar and the operations pillar and the finance pillar, they want to be efficient and effective in their workflow, right? It's do more with less, right? That's kind of always the, the, the efficiency mantra, but and without error, I should say. But 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 the thing that needs to happen here is, is that there needs to be performance measurements of those activities, but translating then what the value of effective technology management means back to the organization, which could mean um, greater accessibility to uh, for internal customers or, you know, the, the business people to reach external customers, um, uh, better ability to manage uh, or to communicate you know, amongst teams, better ability to just operate, you know, function better as a business, whatever it may be. So 
when you think about what your business goals are and you've created that translation of here's how technology and technology management helps us achieve those business goals, that's what needs to be reported back to the business. Now, I want to take a couple of minutes here and talk about um, the, the, the steps for creating a center of excellence and what this adoption roadmap looks like. So there's a couple of different things going on here. And I wanted to point out that, that I, I always like the three-stage approach because it allows you to um, uh, follow that, that conventional crawl, walk, run methodology, if you so choose. Uh, the months, this is, uh, this is kind of describing what would happen if you're starting from nothing and you're starting from scratch, right? The reality of it is, is that any of these stages can be accelerated everybody's going to have different levels of experience and maturity. Um, and, and so, you know, your experiences may vary in terms of timing and in terms of what it looks like to create a center of excellence. But here's just, if you clear your mind, and you say, we're going to start from scratch. Here's kind of what I, what I, what I recommend to people. First and foremost, there needs to be business sponsorship that a center of excellence within technology management is going to be valuable. And in order to do that, there needs to be a business case that is made that talks very clearly about how creating a center of excellence within your organization is not only going to be more efficient uh, and more effective um, and hopefully um, uh, more cost effective, right? Because of the efficiency. Uh, but you need to also think about how the business is consuming technology, what the technology plans are. If you're going through a, a, a technology transformation or a business transformation or a digital transformation, it's highly reliant on technology. And a lot of organizations are the, the, the selling point to that business sponsor is, is really all of those elements in, in context with what's going on in your organization. Right. And so once you have that executive sponsor that says, yes, going forward and building a center of excellence and putting the effort into creating this structure is going to return value propositions X, Y, and Z, whatever it is for your organization, that is an important step. One of the things that can happen, and I've seen this happen in, in, in many organizations, is that, that securing executive sponsorship maybe happens a little bit later in the process. If there needs to be a financial investment or if there needs to be an investment in training, education, uh, new people, new technology resources, and if that needs to happen in order for you to build out your center of excellence, having that business sponsorship up front ultimately is going to make things a little bit easier. If you go down the path of building it and then you have a bunch of requirements where you need either you know, time, money, or resources associated with it that aren't already present, and you don't have that business sponsorship, then securing those resources may be difficult, right? Or it may be prolonged. So starting out with a clear plan that says, here's what we're going to accomplish. Here's why this is valuable. Do you have a business sponsor that's gonna champion that? That helps ease the process um, all along. And then there needs to be a center of excellence pra practice leader. It's going to be that, that one person that's ultimately accountable for everything you've committed to in, in the business sponsorship case study, right? And then there needs to be these discipline leaders. And the discipline leaders, again, are, are the technical, financial, operational, and, and business leaders. Those are the folks that are creating cohesion within all the different activities uh, of the different teams associated with that. And then... I think it's also good to, to form a steering committee. And the steering committee is representatives of the, the, uh, the discipline and, and practice leaders. It's folks that are operating within each one of those pillars. And it, it's, it's, it, it, it also could be business and should be business users, right? People that are involved. If you have a, a steering committee that helps you identify where new opportunities lie to link technology operations back to business or technology management back to business, um, you're always going to be in better shape. And then, and I think that this is, um, this can be done in a couple of different ways. You know, you can, you can put together a racy um, or you can document it in any way you feel comfortable, but I think having an accountability matrix. So everybody within the COE and within each individual pillar knows what everybody else's role is and what the expectations are. 
Uh, that makes things a little bit easier to implement. Oftentimes in technology management, I run across cases where there are a lot of really smart people doing a lot of really good work, but they're done in silos. And when those silos exist, you, you increase the opportunity for rework, you decrease the opportunity for efficiency, and there can be just confusion within the workflows, right? And so making sure that that accountability matrix is understood and, and clearly documented, that gives everybody in that COE uh, insight into that vision and what everybody needs to get done or achieve those results. And then again, I, as I mentioned before, you can use the efficiency first framework or your business process methodology of choice. Once those things are set in place, the steering committee um, helps to drive the strategy associated with the COE, um, thinks about things like policy and process and workflow, and then ultimately puts together the reporting set so that you know what operational, financial, technical, and business transparency looks like, right? You're creating that and you need to understand all the workflows. You need to understand all of those aspects. The other thing that happens in the, in the deploy stage is that second line item, that service delivery financial model. The center of, center of excellence needs to be funded. And maybe the funding is exactly what you have today and you need nothing else, right? Maybe it, it, it comes out of, you know, uh, OPEX, CAPEX, there's a, there's a P&L for technology and you're off to the races. Or there could be a scenario in which uh, additional resources are needed. And so understanding how the COE is funded, and maybe it's already set for today and you have all of those bases covered, but as you begin to change and evolve, you may find that investing in other resources will help you be more efficient and be a better steward back to the business. So clearly understanding and having an agreement on that budget for the center of excellence and how that's going to be funded is, is critical. Once that is deployed and efficiency is, is gained through continuous improvement, then you're at the mature stage, right? And that's, you know, we say two years out, it's, it's for the rest of uh, eternity and time. And that's where there are uh, performance measurements, there's continuous optimization, there's evaluation of new technology, new use cases, emerging technology, and ultimately then, you know, there's, there's full alignment from the business. And you kind of come full circle with this. When you're reporting back to the business in business terms, what the value of the technology management practice is and how the technology delivered is driving business results, then all of a sudden there's buy-in from the business that uh, technology management is not just some you know, back office service delivery function, it's actually a business partner that helps drive results um, according to whatever those results are you know, that the business needs, right? So this becomes a good roadmap. Again, you can accelerate or decelerate this, but when, once all these elements are satisfied, you have a good plan for um, driving efficiency throughout the organization. And, and finally, I wanted to share with you here a couple of different um, value propositions and then alignment challenge questions you can ask yourself um, uh, to say, hey, is the, is the COE uh, you know, on track, right? So these are just a couple of examples. So, Digital transformation, business transformation, you know, uh, technology modernization. There are a lot of there are a lot of buzzy terms around this, but 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 the gist of it is is that uh, that, that that any of these projects are really around leveraging technology to do something different with the business, to transform business. You're either accelerating the way in which business works, you're automating, you're creating more efficiencies, you're creating more convenience for your internal users, more collaboration, you're creating opportunities to uh, go to market, you know, um, with new technology, whatever the case may be. But as you're thinking about any transformation projects that involve technology, those technical, financial, and operational elements are are enabled by a center of excellence. When, when the technology management center of excellence can say to and through all transformation projects, we have full visibility and control of the technical, financial and operational elements so we won't miss a beat, then the center of excellence has value, right? It's clear what that value is, right? So start to think about um, as you're going through the, the, um, the, the adoption phases, is your COE 
uh, strategy position to enable digital transformation? Is the strategy that you develop set up so that technical, financial, and operational excellence can be delivered to the organization? And the answer quite often is not just black and white, yes or no. It's, it's, it lies somewhere in the middle, right? It'll allow you to identify where there are areas of opportunity to refocus your efforts so that um, the strategy can be aligned to uh, support those transformation initiatives. Um, is the business practice leader effective in supporting the alignment? And really by this, it, it, it's really saying, is that business leader doing the function or doing the job of translating business requirements to technology management uh, and back, right? Do they understand what the elements of the business are or what the mission of the business is and what elements of technology management you know, need, are needed to support that? There, there's always the good catch-all, you know, technology is a workforce enabler. And whether we're talking about, you know, a remote workforce and in the office workforce, a hybrid workforce, whatever the case might be, right? Technology, um, the, the, the assets, licenses, and services that we utilize every single day are around uh, helping everybody, the workforce, do their job so that they can execute against the business strategy. So think about things like agility, right? Is the technical practice position to be dynamic and enable the workforce no matter what the change, right? Um, is the financial practice in a position to uh, best leverage the budget dollars to support that service to cost value, right? And then is the operational practice positioned to deliver the services? And again, the answer isn't typically yes or no to this. It's an evolutionary thing, right? You think about a, a digital transformation proje uh, project to get tablets out to the workforce. Uh, if you haven't done that before, do you have the business processes in place to make sure that that's going to be efficient? You know, that's kind of a question you might ask on the operational process, or excuse me, operational practice prospect end. And then think about customer experience and customer experience in this context, I'm kind of making this external facing, but it also could be internal facing. It, it's, it's using technology to deliver new experiences, right? Better experiences, more effective experiences. And again, you're gonna see some of the same types of questions uh, in the challenge is the technical practice uh, position to deliver these, this new experience technology. Can, is the operational practice uh, position to deliver it? Um, and is the business practice leader effective in supporting alignment between uh, what the business wants to accomplish and, you know, the customer experience? And so these are three areas that most organizations are focused on, not always necessarily at the same time. But if you think about creating this structure so that you're adhering to the guiding principles of a center of excellence, you know, technical integrity, um, uh, financial accountability, operational excellence and business results, then the structure you put in place um, is well set to meet those end objectives. Well, I hope you found this information useful. Again, you're gonna receive this deck or, or it'll be available to you as a PDF. Um, AOTMP University has several different career paths. If this topic is of high interest to you, uh, I suggest taking a look at the technology management leader career path. There's a lot of crossover there. And again, IAUG members always receive a discount from AOTMP University through this dedicated page. You can see the specials um, at the top of the, uh, the presentation. And please contact, connect, and follow AOTMP University um, for all of your technology management needs. Thanks, and I really hope you enjoyed this information. Hope to hear from you soon. Take care.